Welcome to your Daily Detroit for Tuesday, May 14th, 2019. I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Sven Gustafson. We're coming to you today from the Podcast Detroit studio at the Detroit Shipping Company. And Jer, it finally feels like spring out there, man. You know, the spring air is feeling great in my beard. Daily Detroit is brought to you in part by Overworld, a quick and casual strategy board game that looks like a retro video game that comes in a super portable package. Design your own fantasy world with jigsaw puzzle pieces. Check out the video and get your copy at overworldboardgame.com. And by the way, this game was designed by a fan of the show. Did Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith spend forfeiture funds meant for the public good on parties and credit cards? That's what Michigan State Police reportedly are looking into as part of a raid of Smith's Macomb Township home earlier today. This comes on the heels of a raid of Smith's offices last month. Investigators want to know what happened to as much as $1.8 million in money that's been forfeited by people who've been arrested. For his part, Smith has previously said all the checks he wrote from four different funds were for legitimate law enforcement purposes. Media reports have revealed that the checks were to pay off credit card balances and buy furniture, holiday parties, support nonprofits, and appropriate law enforcement agencies. The FBI is also reportedly investigating Smith. Here's an entry in the news category we're calling You Thought This Was Settled, but it's so not. The fight over legislative gerrymandering continues in Michigan as Republican lawmakers aim to weaken laws aimed at reforming how voting districts are drawn. To bring you up to speed, Michigan, as well as in many other states in the nation, has state legislative and congressional districts that have been drawn to ensure that the political party in power wins re-election every time. Recently, federal judges ruled that Michigan's legislative and congressional maps are unconstitutional and violate Democratic voters' constitutional rights. The districts were drawn by Republicans. The judges ordered changes to the district maps for the 2020 election, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that things were going to change especially after Michigan voters last year approved Proposal 2 to create a nonpartisan commission to draw districts. But politicians have thrown up roadblock after roadblock. The latest news is that Michigan's Republican-controlled legislature has a budget proposal in the works to defund that commission charged with drawing the new fairer districts. Republicans also wanted lower funding for the Secretary of State's elections budget. The legislature is also suing to slow down the changes that were ordered to take effect for 2020. Okay, so Sven, this whole thing, I want to give some context here. The legislature drawing districts every 10 years after the census, like this is done across the nation. That's kind of the whole thing. The census is taken, then right afterward, whatever party in power, whatever legislature, then redraws the districts to reflect the census. Well, that all was created in time before computers. See, what's happening now... Back in the Paleolithic era, I think. Well, now you can use mapping software to draw the district by the block to favor your party. And there's clear evidence this this is exactly what happens, not just here, but across the country. They just put in a big old map into the program, and then they go, okay, this is the voter data we have. They lay it all over, and they just start drawing the district completely in their favor. In fact, I think there were emails that were shown... Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That, that happens. Right. Exactly. And there's uh, the the case currently before the Supreme Court on this very same issue involving uh, district maps from North Carolina and Maryland. There were two cases joined for the Supreme Court. The North Carolina is a Republican drawn map. The Maryland map is actually a Democratic uh, control uh, drawn map. Right. And that just reinforces something that just frankly, like pisses me off on a regular basis is that leaders are often much more interested in getting reelected than actually debating issues. I mean, Sven, how many times have we tried to talk issues with people, chase them down, mm-hmm. and it's it's not a thing? I mean, witness the uh, lack of progress on a roads funding plan in Lansing right now. And then we're talking about a whole bunch of other things on the side except the issue at hand so that we can, yeah. So here is the thing. I think it's time to move this process to a nonpartisan commission and put more guardrails on it. And frankly, judging by the most recent election, Michigan voters agreed with that. So 
to be clear, I'm not so concerned about one party or another. I just like to create a system that actually encourages debate and discussion because right now, and the courts have gone with this, Michigan voters have gone with this, basically you don't have a vote. Your vote's been taken away Mm -hmm. through gerrymandering, and it's really disgusting that this continues continues on. Yeah, and you know, becoming an elected leader is supposed to be about solving problems, right? Fixing problems, coming up with solutions, not ensuring that you're reelected and you can maintain power. That's not what it's supposed to be about. The old McLeod Steel site in Trenton has been named a Superfund priority site by the U.S. EPA. The national priorities list includes properties across the United States that have the most serious contamination. This makes McLeod eligible for federal dollars in the future for cleanup. The McLeod site's south end was contaminated by years of steel processing and an acid pickling line operation. That sounds really nice. PCBs, asbestos, contaminated water, and other contaminations being removed from some 45 structures, which will eventually be demolished. Crown Enterprises, the real estate company controlled by Ambassador Bridge owner Maddie Maroon, recently purchased the McLeod property in the Wayne County tax foreclosure auction. The riverfront site across from Gross Eel has been silent since the 1990s when McLeod went bankrupt. This is the only Michigan site to get the designation this year. Crews have begun work to demolish the abandoned Summit Place Mall in Waterford and broke ground on the new Oakland County Business Center that will rise in its place. The Oakland Press reports that developers joined with elected officials recently to toast the $63 million new development. The new development will offer more than a million square feet of commercial space and is envisioned as a campus for manufacturers, engineering firms, warehouse space, and office use. All told, it's expected to house more than 2,000 new jobs. DTE also plans to open a new operations center on the site. Work to develop roads and other infrastructure for the new development is expected to start this summer. Summit Place closed in 2014 after years of decline and rising vacancies. Demolition is expected to cost $4.5 million. The Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation has awarded a nearly $2 million grant to the Friends of the Detroit River and other nonprofits and government agencies to fund enhancements to the Iron Bell Trail. That's the non-motorized biking and hiking trail that will one day link the far western end of the Upper Peninsula to Belle Isle in Detroit, spanning more than 2,000 miles. The new grant will fund the Iron Bell Continuation Project, which will fill in three and a half miles of gaps in the trail and enhance connections between Detroit and downriver communities. The project will improve bicycle access to parks including the Lake Erie Metro Park, and will stretch from Flat Rock to Detroit and west to Northville through Hines Park. The grant will help improve road crossings at 17 major intersections along the trail, add trail gateways, and create a new park commemorating the 1932 Hunger March in southwest Detroit at a spot where Downriver linked Greenways, Detroit Greenways, and the Hines Park Greenway all intersect. Work will reportedly begin immediately. Olga's is making a return to the city of Detroit, this time to the food court of MGM Grand Casino. We reported on DailyDetroit.com back in 2015 the closure of the Olga's near Campus Martius. The company was going through a restructuring at the time. The new Olga's and MGM will have a focused menu fit for its food court digs. It'll become the 28th location for the Metro Detroit base chain and the first new one after the death of their founder, Olga Loizan. You'll be able to get your snackers fixed starting sometime in June of this year. They still have those uh, curly fries, you know, that... Oh, yeah. Those are the bomb. Okay, you're all about to see the snackers for me. And here's the other thing about Ogles. I know they've added a bunch of things to their menu, but I'm kind of glad they're doing, like, the focus thing. Because all I ever want is the Olga sandwich. Like, it's kind of like going to Arby's. I don't go to Arby's for all the meats. I don't go to Arby's for a deli sandwich. You know, I go to Ernie's for a dark. You go there for a stack of meat on a bun. Exactly. You know and what that I, horsey sauce. Oh, that horsey sauce. You know what I used to always get? The Big Montana. And now that's just like the super large sandwich. It's National Police Week, and here's a little bit of neat news for you. Detroit's Mounted Police Unit is being represented in Washington, D.C. by three horses named Baby, Lincoln, and Ivan. The city of Detroit has one of the country's oldest mounted police police details dating back to 1893. At one point, the city had five barns, 
80 officers and 60 horses in its mounted unit. Around town, a couple of Detroit's still-standing former police precincts were designed specifically to accommodate horses. Today, the mounted police is funded by a separate foundation and headquartered in a stables at Palmer Park. All right, before we go, thanks to our Patreon supporters. If you want to help keep pushing Detroit's conversation forward by helping us continue pushing out new episodes, join us at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Sven Gustafson. And I'm Jer Stays. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Demolition is expected to cost $4.5 billion. One billion dollars! Did, did, I mean, seriously, did uh, uh, Dr. Evil come up with that number, dude? 4.5 billion dollars! All right, let's try that last paragraph again.